dear brothers uh, and sisters uh, in Christ, uh, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, last uh, uh, few weeks, uh, we had been uh, studying some important, uh, you see, uh, subjects like uh, the great uh, Antichrist system. We see from the Bible that uh, Antichrist uh, is not a literal man who comes with a literal uh, triple six number. It is neither the memory chip or the, or the microprocessor or uh, the tracking device that is injected in uh, some human being. It is none of the, you see, the great uh, rulers of this world. Satan has diverted everybody's mind to, to think that uh, this is the real uh, image of Antichrist. Uh, while the Bible uh, tells uh, a different thing. So we have seen from the scriptures uh, where uh, Apostle John clearly says uh, in 1 John 2, 18 19, that even during the days of apostles, uh, there were many antichrists. If there were many antichrists during the days of apostles, just we need to think uh, whether it was a memory chip, whether it was a tracking device, uh, or whether it was any some electronic device, uh, you see, uh, that is injected into human body, or is it uh, the great uh, the rulers uh, and the warriors of this world? Because none of this uh, existed during the days of uh, Apostle, so Satan is a very cunning flow. He is really diverting the Christians uh, from uh, identifying the real Antichrist. So, we have seen that the Antichrist uh, is a system, is a corrupt religious system among Christianity and not uh, other religion. And uh, we also saw what is the meaning of the putting of the seal upon the forehead and putting of the seal upon the you see, right hand. Putting the seal upon the forehead, uh, you see, is not a little seal. You see, nobody will come uh, and put a little seal. Even if they come and put a little seal, you see, nobody will uh, accept. Uh, you see, now the generation is such, uh, the people won't accept uh, anybody coming, uh, you see, and putting a seal also. Because the whole world knows that the triple six number is uh, about the great Antichrist, uh, you see, the system. And... Uh, uh, the Bible says that those who, who don't have the seal, they will neither be permitted to buy or sell, you see, in the market. So this is not a little market where we buy our grains, uh, food articles, uh, you see. So Satan is not much worried about what we eat and drink. He is not worried about what we really listen and understand and walk according to the word of God. So this is actually speaking about the buying and selling. The word of God, where uh, these writings are totally prohibited in all the churches. Uh, and uh, putting, uh, you see, the seal uh, upon uh, the head and the hand, we see that uh, that means uh, supporting the system in any way or acknowledging any of the false doctrines of the system, it is like, uh, you see, uh, putting, uh, uh, you see, this seal upon our head or upon our hand. Uh, our hands, our self. So we should be very cautious of what we believe, what we trust and what we are supporting. You see, so it's very, very important. And we also saw that how to calculate the triple six number, that this is not a literal number, but this is the name of the beast, as told in Revelation 13 chapter, and the number of the name. So if we calculate, uh, the number that is uh, in the name uh, of uh, the title given to Pope, that is Vicarious Felidi, the number uh, 666 uh, comes to, uh, you see, identification. So this actually is actually speaking about the great Antichrist system. You see the Roman Catholic system, the, the papal system, and not only that one, it also includes all the Protestants uh, denomination as well. So Antichrist, we have seen, it is not only the Roman Catholic, it is also the Protestant denomination. Therefore, we read in the Bible that uh, it is compared to a whore uh, where uh, the, you see, the whore was sitting up on a beast and uh, uh, a mother was like the daughter. She, uh, she was the mother of fathers. Uh, that's what it's called in Revelation 18 chapter. So, mother of fathers means the daughters also are there. 
The daughters also do the same thing what the mothers have done. The mother is the Roman Catholic Church and daughters is the Protestant denomination. So, totally if you see, the entire Christianity is corrupted. So, as we have identified the Antichrist system from the Bible, now it is our responsibility to study, to study the next important topic which Apostle Paul tells every Christian to study. And that is about the great, uh, you see, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us read what Apostle Paul tells in 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verses 1 to 3. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verses 1 to 3. Uh, Gopal brother, sorry, Joel brother, can you read? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not seen second in mind, or trouble neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the as that uh, dull day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by and by any means for that they shall not come except their come falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of predison. Thank you, brother. So he tells, you see, Apostle Paul is actually clearly warning about uh, the second coming doctrine. Because, you see, many uh, believed about the various, uh, you see, uh, ideas uh, about the Lord's second coming. But here Apostle Paul clearly tells when the faithful church has to believe or study about the Lord's second coming. This verse clearly says that uh, you need not be soon shaken nor be troubled in spirit for that uh, day of the Lord, that is the second coming of the Lord, will not come except uh, there be a falling away and a man of sin be revealed. So first, uh, the man of sin, the great antiquary system has to be revealed. The son of perdition, he has to come to the clear light so that the people may identify, you see, and come to know that uh, this is the great antiquary system. Then only, after this only, the second coming of our Lord will happen. That's what Apostle Paul clearly says. Now, as uh, we have studied about the Lord's, uh, you see, uh, about the great Antichrist system uh, prophecy, now it is our responsibility to study the Lord's second coming as per Apostle Paul. Okay. Now, if we ask uh, anybody about uh, Jesus' second coming, you see, what will the people tell? When will Jesus come? If you ask this question to the Christians, what is the reply we get? Who can tell me? Have you ever asked anybody about uh, Jesus' second coming? Uh, and what is the reply that you got, brother? Joel, brother? Very soon. Very soon. Any other reply? Okay. Munna sister, any idea? I hope you had no opportunity to ask this question. Okay, Romy sister, Amar brother, he have you ever asked this question? Uh, tell me, sister, you're not so. You will come visibly. Okay, thank you, sister. You come visibly. Good. Okay, thank you, sister. Romy sister, Amar brother. Very soon, but not sure when. Not sure when. Very good. Or how? Oh, good, sister. So that's the answer which everybody gives. It is the same answer which I also got. See, I began to believe Jesus Christ nearly around 24 years ago. When I first believed, you see, I went to the church the first day. So they all told, oh, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. The pastor came and spoke from the pulpit saying, Oh Lord, please come. Oh, here the anointing is falling. Jesus is coming soon. He thought, I am very much blessed. I have come to such a holy church where Jesus himself is coming now. Oh, yo, I can see my Lord once. Oh, yo, at least, let me see at least him once. I feel so happy. 
then uh, two three hours happened everybody are singing same message but this is not come at all then i thought uh, uh, mostly probably sunday no so many churches are there in to attend all the churches and come so i thought uh, okay no no problem uh, something might have happened you would have got late next time we'll see next sunday same thing huh? oh coming 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 very soon very soon very soon that day really i was completely seeing the door only when jesus will come i'll seeing the window also jesus will come suddenly from the window oh yo yo let me see my lord but uh, jesus did not come at all same thing went on for months together then i thought what is this uh, yeah, telling jesus will come soon 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 you know what is the word they use for coming soon maranatha Maranatha means what? Huh? Even so, Lord, come soon. It's mentioned in the book of Revelation, no? So, so one day what happened? I went and asked, Sir, you're telling Jesus is coming. When you will come, please tell me. He told, no, no, brother. Oh, Jesus is coming very soon. But uh, we don't know when he's going to come. Hmm, just wonder, dear brother, how much time it will take for an angel to come from heaven to earth. How much time it will take? It's given in the Bible, no? So many God children were praying. So immediately angel came from heaven. You see? How much uh, time did the angel take to come from heaven? Tell me, how much time? Approximately tell me. Rob Mr. Amar brother, Munaster, Joel brother, how much time it will take for an angel to come from heaven? You're all there. You're all there. You're all are you able to listen to my voice. Yes, brother. Yes. Tell me. Any idea? Read. Matthew 18.10. Please, somebody, uh, Romister or Amar brother, read Matthew 18.10. Yes, brother. Just a second, brother. Might be Matthew. 18, okay, somebody else, if you open the Bible, you can read Matthew 18.10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Uh, you see, it says uh, the angels uh, behold the face of the Father in heaven. You see, that means what? Uh, angels are so fast uh, that uh, they come at lightning speed. Uh, you see, they always behold the face of the Father, it seems. You know, remember Daniel 9 chapter, where Daniel was praying. So immediately God gave a commandment uh, to Gabriel to go and, uh, you see, answer uh, Daniel and correct him. Immediately, uh, angel Gabriel swiftly, he came to see Daniel. So, there are a lot of examples in the Bible where the angels come with infraction of a second sir. You see? To the earth. Dear brethren, the angels are at lightning speed. Then, just imagine, how much time then it will take for our Lord to come back at the second coming. Surely, you should be not more than a lightning speed. Isn't it? Then why? Jesus is not at come. You see, coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. You see, everybody are telling that it's coming soon. But when we ask about the date and time, they will tell, uh, nobody knows about the day. Nobody knows about the time. Nobody knows about the hour. Why? 
Because Jesus himself said that one in Matthew 13, 32. Read Matthew 13, 32. Uh, Munna Sutter, can you read Matthew 13, 32? Matthew or Mark, brother? Oh, sorry. Mark 13, 32. Thank you. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels, which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Hmm. You see, but of that day and that hour, no man knows, not even the angels in heaven, neither the Son. Jesus himself doesn't know it himself when he is going to come and second event, but only the Father knows. It Therefore, if you ask anybody this question, they will tell, nobody knows. Not even Jesus Christ knows, only Father knows. Sir. Dear brethren, when did Jesus tell these words to the disciples? You see, Jesus told this verse to the disciples when he was alive on this earth. He has not proved his faithfulness to God until his death. You see, hence the complete authority, the complete revelation of everything was not disclosed by God to Jesus Christ. You see, because he had not proven his faithfulness unto death on the cross. But once Jesus died and proved his faithfulness, all the secrets of the Bible, all the hidden mysteries of God's plan and purposes was clearly revealed to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that is the reason uh, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus tells uh, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Read Matthew 28, 18. Uh, Romy sister or Amar brother, can you please read? One second, brother. Hmm. Can you tell me the verse again? Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28. 28 and 18. Correct. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. See, all power in heaven and earth is given to Jesus. Now, when did Jesus receive this entire power? He did not receive it when he was still in the flesh. He received it only after proven faithfulness till death. In the resurrection, God gave him the entire authority. So, before Jesus did not have this authority. See, that is given to us very clearly in book of Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 6 also. Let us read one by verse, verse by verse sir, of Revelation 5th chapter. Uh, Munna sister, can you read please Revelation 5, 1. Munna sister, are you there? Yes, brother, who is first? Revelation, 5th chapter, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat, that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Mm. You see, here uh, John sees a vision where God is sitting on the throne. And in his right hand, he is having a scroll that is written inside and outside. But uh, it is completely sealed with seven seals. So, what is this uh, vision? What does it actually mean? You see, it uh, shows uh, God who is the emperor of the universe. He is having everything under his control. You see, even the word of God is in his hands. And this word of God is not so open to everybody. 
but it is like a sealed book. Nobody can open and read the Bible just like that. You see? So, the scroll was written inside and outside. That's what the verse says. So, inside means what? There are so many things which are in-depth, which had a lot of meanings. You see, the deep things of God, those things were hidden. That was sealed with seven seals. So, until you open the seal, nobody could understand what is there inside. So, seven means what in the Bible, if you see? Seven in the Bible means a complete picture. You see? So, Bible is completely sealed until, you see, eh? God opens uh, the seal. Nobody can see what is there inside. You see? Uh, let us read Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Uh, Verse 11 and 12. Amar brother, can you read Isaiah 29, 11 and 12? Amar brother, you there? Yes, brother. Uh, brother, Isaiah 29, 11 and 12. Eleven and twelve, and the vision of all the become into you as the word of a book that is sealed, which means delivered to one that is long, saying, "Read this." I pray thee, and he said, "I cannot." For it is sealed, and the book is uh, delivered to him that is not long, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he said, I am not long. Ah, see, how is the word of God? It is sealed book. Neither can the learned understand it. Neither can the unlearned also understand it. So understand the Bible, God's Holy Spirit is first of all important. So, the Bible was a sealed book. You see, it was completely in the hand of God. It was under his control. So, when nobody could read what is inside, what would the people read? Just what is printed outside the scroll. You see, so, it was like a scroll. Somebody could read whatever is printed outside. Therefore, until Jesus revealed to the church, the entire Christians were just uh, able to understand only the outward things. Uh, deep things, they were not at all able to understand. Okay, next, what happened? Revelation 5, 2. 2, 3, 4. Continue, please. Revelation 5th chapter, verses 2, 3, and 4. Last time, we can continue. Revelation 5, 2, and I saw his strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither neither to look thereon mm. and i wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon very and good. one of the hmm. please please none of the and one of the elders saith unto me weep not behold the line of the tribe of Judah the root of David hmm. hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seal thereof very good and I be so here if you see John you see he sees this one and begins to weep because there was not even one worthy found to open the scroll and read what is inside this book, it seems. So John began to weep. As John was weeping, you see, the angel came and strengthened him, saying, Don't worry, behold the line of the tribe of Judah. He has overcome.
to break open the scroll and read what is inside the scroll. Continue, sir. Uh, Munashtar, please continue from where you stopped. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Very good, sir. So, immediately, as John was weeping, an angel, sorry, elder comes and strengthens him, saying, Weep not, for behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has overcome and proved worthy to open the scroll and see what is inside. We all know who is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ. There you go. Jesus Christ is found worthy. You see? So how did he prove himself worthy? It is only after his death on the cross. So once Jesus died on the cross, he proved himself worthy. So he can open the scroll and you see, show it to everybody. You see, that's what Jesus did. He took the, you see, scroll, opened it. Therefore, Matthew 28, 18, we read now, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Therefore, what did Jesus say when he was on earth? He said, if I go, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. Once the Holy Spirit comes, that shall lead you into all truth. You see, read John 16, 13, sister. Uh, Munashtar, please read John 16, 13 also. A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. John 16, 13, sure. Sorry, sorry, brother. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will see you things to come. Very good, sir. See, the, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall lead you into all truth. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus gave this Holy Spirit to the church only after his uh, death on the cross and his resurrection where he went to heaven and received this authority. Then only Jesus on the day of Pentecost put the Holy Spirit upon the church. So, okay. <clears throat> so, first Jesus did not know but once Jesus died and proved his faithfulness, now Jesus knows everything. He says, all authority is given to me in heaven earth. You see? And uh, do you think that the church also will not know? Will not know at all about the same coming? No. There's no scripture which tells that the church won't know at all. You see? The Bible says the church will know about the Lord's uh, second uh, advent, it seems. Uh. Let us read, you see, First Thessalonians 5.1. First Thessalonians 5.1. Gopal brother, can you read? Uh, sorry, Gopal brother. Uh, Joel brother, can you read? Mm. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. You see? But of the times and season, brethren, it is not necessary that I write unto you. No. Here Apostle Paul is speaking about which times and seasons. Sir. You see? Mark 13 chapter we read regarding the time, regarding the tower, which no man knows. You see? But here, Apostle Paul is speaking about time and seasons, which is not necessary for me to write. That means what? Not required at all. No, no. Because you already know it. Continue with the journal. Read from the Bible. Read verse 2 also. Joel, brother, you can continue reading from the Bible. First Thessalonians 5 2. Okay, brother. For yourselves know perfectly that day 
of the Lord so commit as a thief in the night. Mm. You see, he is speaking about what? The day of the Lord. He is speaking about the day of the Lord and comes like a thief in the night. Therefore, he is speaking, it is not necessary for me to write about the day of the Lord. Which is the day of the Lord? Jesus' second advent because you already know it. You see? Now, read 1st Thessalonians 4 chapter 16, 17, 18. Read Joel brother. Please read. For the Lord himself shall... Sorry. Uh, correct, correct, correct. Okay. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm. Then we which are alive and remain, remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet, to meet the Lord in, their, in the air, Mm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Ah, you see, here, first Thessalonians four sixteen is speaking about the Jesus' second advent. How the Lord shall descend Himself from heaven with a shout of an archangel, with a trump of God, and when He is going to return, what will happen? Is the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see. This clearly proves that when Jesus is going to return at the second advent, some faithful members will be on the earth. You see, and it says, and those who prove faithfulness shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air. And Apostle Paul says, comfort you with uh, these words. So which uh, clearly proves that uh, Jesus' second coming, the purpose of it, who will come to know? The church will come to know. After uh, telling uh, 1st Thessalonians 4, 18, 1st Thessalonians 5th chapter begins. Actually, in the original Bible, there is no chapter division, there is no verse division. This was done for the sake of convenience, for better understanding. That's it. But this is not uh, done by the Lord. This is not, uh, you see, uh, divisions were made uh, by the none of the apostles also. So, here it tells that Jesus, you see, Adventa, you see, huh? you will be able to clearly understand because there is no need for me to write unto you. That means the church will know about uh, Jesus' second coming. Okay. If the church knows about the Jesus' second advent, then we need to understand about Jesus' second advent. You see, then, uh, today, that means, uh, not today, the particularly this subject, what we are going to cover is that, in the first part, we are going to cover why Jesus' second coming. Why is Jesus going to come? The second advent, okay? And second part is that, we are going to see the general expectations how Jesus' uh, will come at the second advent. What do the people think? You see? And the third one is, uh, we're going to say, how oh, really Jesus is going to come? Isn't it? Fourth part, then how to see this Jesus? Or how to identify this Jesus? You see? Then, the date of his second coming. We're going to see the date also. Okay? So, now let us come to the part one, first part. You see, when is Jesus' second advent? You see, sorry, why is Jesus' second coming going to come? Why is he going to come again? Dear brother, this is the first important thing we need to understand. See, Jesus is going to return again to rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. You see, he is going to rule as king of kings. You see, Lord of Lords, uh, you see, for a period of how many years? Uh? Thousand years, dear brethren. So, this is the main purpose of Jesus' second event. Next, uh, he comes to bruise the head of the serpent. Uh, 
You see, we know that uh, the subject of the seed of the woman. You see, Satan uh, is going to be shortly crushed and uh, what all things he trusted is going to be destroyed. Okay. And uh, the third one that he is going to come in the second advent, he is going to come to judge the world. You see, uh, let us read John 14, 19. John 14, 19. Uh, Romans sister, can you read? Sorry, Jude 14. Uh, Romans sister, can you read Jude 14 to our sister, if you don't mind? Okay. Ah, okay. Yes, brother. Please, please, please. Sister. sister Jude, verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh, seventh from Adam, mm. prophes prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Hmm. Continue. Ah, to execute. To to execute judgment uh, upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which Thank they have ungodly committed. Thank you. Sir. And no of. Thank you, sir. Anyway, it clearly says Jesus' second advent is going to come to judge the world. Okay. So, this is one more point. And next point is why Jesus is going to come is to completely take the church. What did 1st 416 say? That we should join the Lord in the air. You see? So, that means the resurrection of the church in the first resurrection, it will be happening only after the advent of Jesus Christ, not before the second advent of Jesus. Uh, read John 14, chapter 2 and 3. Amar brother, can you read John 14, 2 and 3? You there, brother? Yes, In my father's house are many um, men say, say some, if it were not so, I would have told you, I got to prepare a place for you. And if I got and prepare a place for you, I will come again and uh, receive you into myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Uh, see, Jesus is going to return second advent to take his church. So see, in the first resurrection, take his church. So the church may be with him and rule with him for a thousand years. So this is the one important thing also. And next, Jesus as soon as he returns, he is going to bind Satan for a period of how many years? Sir? Thousand years. Isn't it? Revelation 20, chapter verse 1, 2 and 3. We have clearly read this one many times. Isn't it? So Jesus, at second advent, he is going to bind uh, Satan for a period of thousand years so that he may deceive the nations no more. You see? So Satan won't be there in a thousand years at all. Okay? This is one of the purpose of Jesus' second advent. Next up, uh, as Jesus told, all the dead will be resurrected and brought back to life at the second advent. Read 2 Thessalonians, oh, sorry, uh, read John 5, 28, 29. Brother. John 5, 28, 29. Uh, Joel, can you read John 5, 28, 29? Okay, brother. 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the 
hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the res resurrection of damnation very good so here jesus tells is not going to only resurrect the church but all the dead are going to rise again all the dead people who are level lived in this earth they shall all rise again they shall all come back to life hearing the sound of the son of man okay now other purpose of jesus coming is hebrews 928 hebrews 928 uh romans sister can you read hebrews 928 So Christ was once offered to bear the sin of many and unto them that look for him shall he uh, appear appear to second time without sin unto salvation unto salvation so Jesus the second advent is going to bring salvation for everybody for all the people is going to bring salvation okay Now this is the first part we have seen what is the this is purpose of Jesus second coming he is going to come to do so many activities you see the like one one way he will be resurrecting the church other way he will be preparing the church other way he will be gathering the saints who are dead you see and redeeming them so these are the things which actually Jesus will be doing at uh, you see the lord's uh, second advent okay uh let us read first thessalonians 4 16 and 17 first thessalonians 4 16 and 17 uh who can read gopal brother can you read for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord see so the general expectation of a lord same coming is based on this verse only the lord himself shall descend with a voice with a shout of an archangel that means what uh, Uh, all the angels will be coming they will all be blowing trumpets uh, and jesus will come with the voice of all his loud voice uh, and uh, what will happen to him sir all the people who are dead uh, in christ uh, you see uh, literally gone to death uh, fully sleeping only days will be uh, made alive uh, you see so let us say so jesus is going to come with a loud voice of a trumpet and the christians will be resurrected uh, first you see therefore you would have seen uh, uh, the concept of rapture now rapture means what uh, you see one will be taken other left uh, you see imagine uh, if a uh, pilot uh, who is uh, going on the plane if he is a christian and do the type of rapture if he gets raptured Think about the condition of the people who are living in the plane now. What about them? You see? So, we will see what actually the word rapture means in the Bible. You see? So, it is, uh, uh, it says, uh, you see, uh, the church shall be gathered. Okay. Now, what did Apostle Paul say? First, you know, four sixteen. the Lord shall descend with a shout of a archangel. 
Correct now? The sound of a trumpet. Now read. First is the name is Phi 2. Uh, Gobal brother, please continue reading. First is the name is Phi 2 brother. For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Ah, you see? Here, Apostle Paul says that the day of the Lord should come like a thief in the night. Now you tell me, how will the thief come? Will he come with blowing a trumpet? No. He will come very silently. You see, I finish all his work. By the time anybody comes to know, he would have looted everything. That's how the thief comes, no? He won't come telling everybody. But here, you see, first is 416, it says, you see, the dead in Christ shall rise first. They shall come with a loud shot, shout of an archangel. You see, a sound of a trumpet. So Jesus will come with the blowing of a trumpet. You see? But here, in 5.2 it says, it will come like a thief. Now will thief come like blowing a trumpet? But everybody may come. Huh? You see? The thief won't come and blow a trumpet. He will come very silently. Not everybody, not anybody can identify at all. Only few people will come to know. And uh, immediately what will happen? Uh? You see, he will go. You see, nobody will come to know at all. Uh. But this is how Jesus is going to come. And how he is going to come? He is going to come with a trumpet blow or he is going to come so that uh, nobody can, uh, you see, come to know. So which is correct? Uh? We will see. Next verse, read Acts 11, brother. Read Acts 11. Uh, Amar, brother, can you read Acts 11? Okay, Acts 11. Yeah. <coughs> Which also said, Ye mean of Galil. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven, the same Jesus which is taken off from you into heaven, mm. shall so come in like uh, manner as ye have seen him go into heaven? You see, like manner you will come as you are seeing him going. Similarly, you will come the same way. Huh? Now you tell me, will the thief come in the same way? Wa? So everybody can see. Ya. No, no. The thief will come in the night. That's what the Bible says. But here it says, ah, every ah, people will see him. Read Dorma verse, brother. Uh, Revelation 1 7. Revelation 1 7. Yeah, Revelation 1 7. <coughs> Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which fires him and all in the of the earth shall, uh, earth shall will become of him even so. Amen. Amen. Behold he cometh with clouds every eye shall see him. Huh? How can every eye see him when he is coming like a thief? Huh? When he is coming like a thief, how will Jesus, uh, how can he blow a trumpet? So how do you understand this verse? Let us read John 14, 19. Read John 14, 19. Uh, Romister, can you read John 14, 19? Yet a little while, and he and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. See, he says, yet a little while, the world seeth me no more. You see, Jesus is saying, only a little while I'll be there. After that, the world cannot see me at all. You see. Then, if the world cannot see Jesus, uh, then how come everybody, every eye can see him? You see, see these verses, these verses are contradicting to each other. One verse says, every eye shall see him. 
other was jesus himself says the world cannot see me one verse says he shall come like a thief in the night one verse says he shall come blowing a trumpet how can a thief come like blowing a trumpet you see then how can everybody see well bible says no man can see dear brethren to understand this one you see first of all we need to study a few things about jesus christ now what is that one first we need to study how jesus came to this earth you see in what way did he come to this earth okay then we need to study how he died okay how jesus actually died you see in what way what was the way of his death you see and then we need to study what or how he was resurrected you see how jesus came how jesus died and how jesus was resurrected after this one only we will understand how jesus is now how is jesus to look at in what nature is our lord now how do we identify it <laughs> then at last we will come to know how jesus will come again so these five points has to be studied if we need to understand the second coming of jesus you see first we had told about the six man points but in point number 2 only we have subheading sir you see how he came how he died how he was resurrected how is now jesus and how he will come again so these things are very important so coming week we will study about these five points but uh, next time when you are coming you all please uh, make a homework okay shall i give you a homework a small homework will you all do it okay. joy brother munaster romester if i okay, give you brother. homework you all do it yes brother yes brother okay it's very simple next week when you are coming please identify in the bible how many times jesus appeared to the disciples after resurrection okay how many times jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection from the dead okay we all know jesus died on friday and on sunday was resurrected and uh, since then since his resurrection how many times did he appear to the disciples take all these incidents make a list of it kindly put it in a group in order 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 now my humble suggestion don't search the google search the bible it will be really very very fruitful very useful for our class next week okay anybody has got any doubts any questions anybody joel brother Muna sister, Romi sister. No question, brother. I'm curious about um, for the classes, brother. But for today, no questions. Okay, sir. Good. Yeah. Then we'll see next week. So until then, Lord bless you. So the end, uh, uh, brother uh, Joel. Joel, brother, can you offer a prayer?